Let's bring in Dennis now. And Dennis, Elsa did get weaker as it moved through Cuba today. It did, and that's expected as it moves over land. It loses its fuel, the warmer waters. And now that it's moved back over water, it has gotten a little bit stronger. We're going to take the next five or six minutes to talk a little bit about it. Thanks to all the folks who came by our live show tonight. I think we had about 10,000 folks out there watching. And it was a pretty interesting time where we actually talked about the track that has been shifting a little bit back and forth over the last few hours. And we'll touch on that in just a minute because I do want to mention that we had some decent rains across the area today. And, you know, a month ago, we would have loved that, right? As dry as it was, we were talking about drought, fire dangers, and now it's kind of too much of a good thing. And unfortunately, that is only going to continue right on through tomorrow. We're now a flood watch is in effect for the entire area. So there it is. Again, a very ragged system right now, but that center has crossed back over Cuba and is now in the Gulf of Mexico. And it's got about 24 to 36 hours of warmer water before it actually makes landfall, which we believe, at least the Hurricane Center right now, is forecasting up around the Big Bend area, Horseshoe Beach. A lot of folks think, well, it's all this warm water. Why would it not intensify? Certainly possible, but there are some things coming into play that would limit that intensification. I think a lot of folks think to themselves, remember Hurricane Michael a few years ago? You went to bed, it was a Category 1, a couple, well, maybe 24 to 36 hours later, it was a Cat 5. I think that's always the worst case scenario in our minds for any storm in the Gulf of Mexico. So it is certainly something that we'll talk about in terms of intensification, but just how much. There's a level, there's a cap there, we'll touch on that. 80 degrees right now under mostly cloudy skies. Southeast winds at 7. We were hot today, hit 95 degrees, nearly a record high of 96. So if you notice the heat was extreme today, you were right, but tomorrow it all begins to change again as Elsa works this way. So overnight, still maybe an isolated shower. I mean, the atmosphere is just stoked with moisture, so there's no way around it. We're going to be dodging raindrops later tomorrow morning, and there they are on lunchtime. But let's talk about the timing first of all. Heaviest rain arrives later tomorrow evening into the overnight hours. The winds, the same thing. And unfortunately, I know a lot of us don't want to hear this, but I think the strongest winds will be in the overnight hours, obviously when it's dark out. And power outages are just that much worse when you don't have any power and the winds are really cranking. Now, much like our thunderstorms, you get a five or 10 minute thunderstorm, we can lose power. So if you get a prolonged period of wind, it's likely going to happen. So I will say this now, we'll probably say it a million more times. If you lose power and you have a generator, please do not use that generator indoors or in the garage. If you just bought one this year for the first time, that is the thing to remember. Every year when there's a tropical storm or a hurricane, we hear about folks dying because they've left that generator on inside their home and carbon monoxide can kill you. So keep the generator outside if you are going to use it. By tomorrow night, mid to late evening, there comes the leading edge of the heaviest rain and the heaviest wind. Now, what kind of wind are we talking about? Probably in the ballpark of about 40 to 45 miles an hour along the coast, gusting higher than that. And then inland areas, it gets lower, depending on the track. I suppose if this track were to be a little more toward us, then those levels would go up. And that's a possibility. I mean, this thing's still just over Cuba, and we're talking about 30 miles either way. So clearly that can happen. But the next question is timing of that surge, because Ada opened up a lot of eyes for folks in this area. The water will be pushing out of the bay and out of areas until the center of that storm passes where you live. So let's say this is around 3, 3.30 in the morning on Wednesday morning. The center's right about here. That's when the water turns around and starts coming in. So again, if we get any water, it will be in the overnight hours and into the early morning. Good news, though, is the high tide this time is quite a bit lower than Ada was in November and about a foot and a half lower than the high tide tomorrow morning. So at least we're lucking out in terms of how tide, how high the tide is at that point in time. And then everything begins to move north. And then by midday on Wednesday, things begin to improve dramatically. In a nutshell, that's your forecast. I would not be surprised at all if we see tornado watches added to the, this list. But at the end of the day, tropical storm conditions are expected at least gusts across the inland areas. More the sustained winds of about 40 to 45 along the coast. And that's where that storm surge is the much higher risk as water is expected to rise maybe as high as three or four feet at high tide in the overnight hours on Wednesday morning. Flood warnings are rather flood watches for the entire Bay Area through Wednesday. So let's take a look at Florida's most accurate seven day forecast after tomorrow night into Wednesday. Things begin to improve dramatically. 
bottom line, then we're back to more of a summer-like forecast the rest of the week. We'll be updating overnight on social media, 24-7, as always, to keep you up to date. And, of course, tomorrow, right on through the day, we'll be continuing our coverage as ELSA gets closer.